So thank you, Thomas Anders, for joining this Digitizing Europe Summit, and thank you for your time to answer a few questions. My first question would be, um, Airbus is working on many project, projects such as City Airbus for HANA to, that will transform the, the future of transport. So what is the vision? How does the future of flight look like in, in your view? Well, the future of aviation, future of flight, <coughs> I think that's increasingly clear, will be powered by data. Uh, so we look in the 2020s, I think new development of, of large aircraft, small aircraft, flying taxis, you're, you're mentioning the demonstrators that we're featuring uh, these days. Uh, data will be absolutely uh, central, uh, particularly for autonomous flight. So, and, and aerospace is a very much data-driven industry, except that we didn't use the data uh, until fairly recently in an extensive way. We've probably thrown away 95% or more of the data in the past, so that's all changing. So like many other industries, this industry is also kind of, you'd say, reformed or revolutionized by, you know, big data and the ability to exploit and, and use these data. This is an interesting point because we just um, published a tech divide study and people, um, and we found out that the Europeans are much more than the people in India and the US and, and in China scared of future technologies, of privacy concerns. Um, what, what is the problem? How can we overcome that fear in Europe? Well, you're absolutely right. I mean, Europe seems to prefer to play defense rather than offense. I mean, we are world leading in protection and privacy of data and that's all fine because, you know, obviously we need some regulation there, but the offense is lacking. So all too often people look at it in a, in a negative way and all too often they, you know, uh, launch committees and what have you to examine in detail the implications, blah, blah, blah. Well, when they're ready with that, the opportunity is gone. Speed is so important in this development and if those uh, uh, scientists and experts are right that predict that we are at the beginning of going exponential on, on data and uh, data usage, etc., etc., uh, then obviously uh, those who uh, move fast have a, a, a big advantage and, and, and Europe is not, is not fast. And the other thing is we need a better culture that starts with education. Uh, I think our education today, by and large, is not prepared for this huge boost of, of digital and data uh, that, is, that is still ahead of us. Uh, but you know, Europe has incredible brains, etc., but many of Europe's best brains are working in, in the valley or might even go to China or other places where they find the environment more conducive to their work. That's, that's, that's a pity. So. I think that, that Europe and European governments should focus on uh, you know, preparing the ground, setting, setting the framework, rather than fantasizing about uh, uh, building a new Google or Alphabet or, or what have you. Referring to the thing that you first said, um, you criticized Europe also in the past um, in regards to the exploration of the aerospace because you said Europe is much too risk averse and, and has too many concerns and is too slow. Um, other people say that Europe um, stands for its ethical uh, standards and, and it's a good advantage that, that we think before we act. What do you think is, is more important, the, the speed and then to you know, just try out things and the experimental wishes, or on the other hand, um, the, 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 the regards and the guardings of, of um, ethical standards and... and um. I would say any extreme in, in this um, you know, scenario is, is bad, but I don't see why you wouldn't be able to combine speed with also necessary ethical concerns and experimenting is, is widely important. I mean, how did the Googles and Amazons and all these companies, and now look at the Chinese side, uh, how did they come into existence? By, by trial and error, by, by trying things out, etc. Uh, if they could have only started their work once an extensive work had been done on all the implications, da da da, uh, it would not have worked. So I think we need to combine this. And we, not sh we should not hide in Europe behind, oh, we need to first uh, figure out regulation and, and privacy of data and all that. The American way is obviously much more successful, i.e., I call that throw a stone into the pond and follow the ripples. Uh, and by the way, that's pretty much what we've done at, at Airbus. And, and, and then you, if you run into problems and say, okay, we need some regulation here, we need to co be concerned about this, 
uh, then do it. But don't waste your time at the beginning trying to figure out all the terrible scenarios that, that could happen and which you would want to prevent. Leading to, to one question, coming back to Airbus, um, in the study we also found out that the people are most scared of drones, that they must, in, in the views of the people this is the most dangerous future technology and I know that drones are very important for the future transport. Does Airbus have a strategy to overcome that fear and to build trust um, also in regards to specific future technologies such as drones? Well, I wouldn't call it a strategy, but, but we're very open about the, the drone technology, there's nothing nothing to, to fear for. Drones, as you call it, or unmanned aerial vehicles, as we, we call it, uh, are a huge chance uh, to, to improve mobility, to improve uh, uh, transport uh, of things, etc. Yes, of course, it all started, the first drone was used militarily. So there are military drones as well, absolutely. And there's an endless debate about ethical implications of drones. By the way, I can't see why putting a soldier, a, a human being, into harm's way is better than doing it without, without pilots. Um, I think that the recipe has to be to be as open and transparent about um, the, the technology that is behind that and, uh, and open and transparent about uh, the, the possibility of use. I mean, there are huge opportunities. I see that as a very, very positive uh, development, but you're probably right. We need to. Um, make more efforts in terms of communication. So my last question would be, um, because today is the Digitizing Europe Summit, we want to look into the future and then know what do we have to do. Um, what would be your greatest wish for the future in Europe or for Europe? What, what do you think we would need to change? You mentioned education. Is that the area? I think education infrastructure is very important. Look how difficult it is in this country to get 5G uh, going and uh, all that. But, but the, I mean, we need to accept, and it's um, admittedly that's not just for politicians nor for for business people. It's something the whole cons the whole cons society needs to uh, cooperate in that. This lifelong learning is with us already. <coughs> that no longer people can just learn one job and for the next 50 years they will be in this job and this job is stable, etc. Uh, somebody has suggested that you know something like nano decrease at universities, i.e. you don't study something for five years, you study something for a couple of months and then you're skilled in this and that and maybe in a couple of years you need to, you need to do that. But it requires an enormous flexibility as a society, so it's really a societal uh, issue and and business uh, has to actively take part in that and make, make people decision makers and the society at large aware, not only of the risk but also of the opportunities uh, of doing that. But it's a, it's a huge challenge. Thank you so much for your time and I hope Pleasure. you have a very interesting day today.